are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio. Mother's Day Poetry, a selection of verse read by Tim Graham and Gazella Rowe. Introduction The relationship with our mother is one of the most powerful many of us will ever feel. It rivals those with our children and partners in a way that both permeates and challenges how and on what terms we live our lives. A woman giving birth is not only bringing life into the world, she is doing so usually at great pain to herself. The fact that this is transformed within minutes of birth to a deep, unconditional love is truly beautiful. Whatever the future brings for mother or child, that bond will hold. The first attempt at language by babies and toddlers is usually m, a ma, a universal sound for mother. In every race, culture and domain, mothers are seen as both a symbol and living emblem of love and nurture, of comfort and safety. As we grow older, that relationship changes, but on a fundamental level remains giving, unconditional and unequivocal. As we become parents ourselves, that circle of experience completes a full turn. For poets through time, this unique and fulfilling relationship has enabled some of the greatest verse to be written by some of our most famed poets, from Wordsworth to Whitman to Tennyson. We hope this experience of listening to these carefully chosen words will help you reflect and further enjoy the experience that a mother's love has brought to your life. Their devotion to us ensures ours to theirs. Whilst we celebrate Mother's Day once a year, every day is their day. To My Mother by Christina Rossetti Today's your natal day, sweet flowers I bring, Mother, accept, I pray, my offering. And may you happy live and long us bless, receiving as you give great happiness. To My Mother by Robert Louis Stevenson You too, my mother, read my rhymes for love of unforgotten times, and you may chance to hear once more the little feet along the floor. To My Dear Mother in Sickness by Lucretia Maria Davidson Hang not thy harp upon the willow, more not a brighter, happier day, but touch the cord and life's wild billow will shrinking foam its shame away. Then strike the cord and raise the strain, which brightens that clouded brow. Oh, beam one sunshine smile again, and I'll forgive thy sadness now. Though darkness, gloom, and doubt surround thee, thy bark, though frail, shall safely ride. The storm and whirlwind may rage round thee, but thou wilt all their wrath abide. Hang not thy harp upon the willow, which weeps over every passing wave. Though life is but a restless pillow, there's calm and peace beyond the grave. The Mother's Grave by Peter John Allen I knew a little maiden than falling snows more fair. Her laughing eye was azure, and golden was her hair. Her voice was sweetest music, for all she said was kind. I met her in the meadows, where flowers she went to find. I asked her why she pulled them. She bade me come and see. She led me to the graveyard, and showed a grave to me. My mother's home is here, sir, and every morn and night I come and spread her threshold, with flowerets sweet and bright. And though I never see her, I know that she is here, and oh, I am so happy when with my mother dear. I heard the little maiden her simple feelings tell, and on the narrow tombstone the tears of pity fell. I helped to strew the flowerets, and went upon my way, in mingled joy and sadness, not sorrowful nor gay. But oh, my heart grew heavy when tidings reached my ear, that she, poor little maiden, had joined her mother dear. She culled the fairest flowerets to deck her mother's bed, and now the brightest blossom, that little maid, is dead. But in a blissful paradise, mid ever-blooming bowers, the mother and the daughter now gather fairer flowers. To a young lady whose mother was insane from her birth, by Lucretia Maria Davidson. 
And thou hast never, never known a mother's love, a mother's care, has wept and sighed and smiled alone, unblessed by even a mother's prayer. Oh, if sad sorrow's blighting hand have ever an arrow, it is this, to feel that frenzy's burning brand have wiped away a mother's kiss, to mark the gulf, the starless wave, which rolls between thee and her love, to feel that better were a grave, a grave beneath a home above, than thus that she should linger on in dreamless, sunless solitude, like some bright ruined shrine whereon all loveliness and truth hath stood. And he, her love, her life, her light, how burst the storm over him, O oh, darker than Egyptian night, t'was one wild troubled dream. To gaze upon that eye whose beam was love and life and light, to mark its wild and wandering gleam which dazzles but to blight. To turn in anguish and despair from whose wild notes of sadness and feel that there was darkness there, the midnight mist of madness. To start beneath the thrilling swell of notes still sweet though wasted, to mark the idol loved too well in all its beauty blasted. Oh, it were better far to kneel in darkly brooding anguish upon the graves of those we love than thus to see them languish. The Three Graves by Samuel Taylor Coleridge Beneath the foulest mother's curse no child could ever thrive. A mother is a mother still, the holiest thing alive. My Mother Dear by Samuel Lover There was a place in childhood that I remember well, and there a voice of sweetest tone bright fairy tales did tell, and gentle words and fond embrace were given with joy to me when I was in that happy place upon my mother's knee. When fairy tales were ended, good night, she softly said, and kissed and laid me down to sleep within my tiny bed. And holy words she taught me there, methinks I yet can see, her angel eyes as close I knelt beside my mother's knee. In the sickness of my childhood, the perils of my prime, the sorrow of my riper years, the cares of every time. When doubt and danger weighed me down, then pleading all for me, it was a fervent prayer to heaven that bent my mother's knee. I must not tease my mother. I must not tease my mother, for she is very kind, and everything she says to me I must directly mind. For when I was a baby and could not speak or walk, she led me in her bosom sleep and taught me how to talk. I must not tease my mother, and when she likes to read or has a headache, I will step most silently indeed. I will not choose a noisy play, nor trifling troubles tell, but sit down quite by her side and try to make her well. I must not tease my mother, I've heard dear father say, when I was in my cradle sick, she nursed me night and day. She lays me in my little bed and gives me clothes and food, and I have nothing else to pay but trying to be good. I must not tease my mother. She loves me all the day, and she has patience with my faults and teaches me to pray. How much I'll strive to please her, she every hour shall see. For should she go away or die, what would become of me? The Bedtime Kiss O oh, mothers! So weary, discouraged, worn out with the cares of the day. You often grow cross and impatient, complain of the noise and the play. For the day brings so many vexations, so many things gone amiss. But mothers, whatever may vex you, send the children to bed with a kiss. The dear little feet wander often, perhaps from the pathway of right. The dear little hands find new mischief, to try you from morning till night. But think of the desolate mothers who'd give all the world for your bliss and as thanks for your infinite blessings, send the children to bed with a kiss. For some day their voice will not vex you. The silence will hurt you far more. You will long for the sweet childish voices, for a sweet childish face at the door and to press a child's face to your bosom. You'd give all the world just for this. 
for the comfort twill bring you in sorrow. Send the children to bed with a kiss. Mother McCree by Rita Johnson Young There's a spot in my heart which no Colleen may own. There's a depth in my soul never sounded or known. There's a place in my memory, my life that you fill. No other can take it, no one ever will. Sure, I love the dear silver that shines in your hair, and the brow that's all furrowed and wrinkled with care. I kiss the dear fingers, so toil-worn for me. Oh, God bless you and keep you, Mother McCree. Every sorrow or care in the dear days gone by was made bright by the light of the smile in your eye, like a candle that's set in the window at night. Your fond lovers cheered me and guided me right. Oh, God bless you and keep you, Mother McCree. I am your mother and you my child by Daniel Sheehan. I am your mother and you my child. From my loins your cracked and wrinkled skin appeared, each breath you gulped and cried like music to my soul. Each look at you betrays my role as though divine and sent. The bond is not just blood and DNA. Your body will stumble. Yes, the vessel of your early months will fold and yield to death and all the years of side by side will falter, halt, and disappear. But you, my child, my love, my life, will take my joy, my memories and hopes, and grow them slowly with your own, to form that moment in your life. So life will start anew, and through, from you the circle has begun. The Gigolo Sun by Jean Graham a tall, slick-haired boy in a second-hand dinner jacket, very thin bow tie, a bit punk. The woman, nice enough looking, dressed up, hair sprayed, eye shadowed, obviously pushing 50. Disapproving looks in the restaurant. A good one, plush, serious waiters, respectable, well-heeled clientele, and then dismissive. What can you expect nowadays? Probably something from the periphery of the pop world, decadent, drugged up try anything once. In the dark little jazz club, drummed tight as a tin can with bounding sound, soaking up speech and thought like a sponge. The looks were young, briefer, uncensorious. So, okay, whatever turns them on, I couldn't fancy it. But the assumption was there. The relationship was sexual, couldn't be anything else. How right or wrong were they? Little did they know I had watched this man as an infant, worshipping as he slept ferociously, busy as if his life depended on it. A small boy in love with me, turning his father out of bed on Sunday mornings. A rough boy, running to school, open and full of trust. An adolescent mess, drinking cigarettes, pot. Interviews with headmasters, defiance, scenes, sulks and smelly feet. A brief encounter with death and maturity, a dead father and dependent weeping women to steer through the rites. The transformation, ugly duckling to swan, and the women started. The worst time for me, really. I hated them, seeing not vulnerable children like my daughter, but deadly contemporary rivals, the disgusting pangs of jealousy helplessly skewing my vision. Longing for the little boy who went steady with me and thought I was the sun, moon and stars. But he struggled free somehow. The cord snapped. I don't know when. But the child is gone now. And miraculously, we are both adults and friends. I had as tough a time making it as he did. We are both protective, loving, firmly related but separate people living their own lives. A man who likes me and I him who see the fancy ability of each other, who takes me out to dinner sometimes, the gigolo son with his mole mother. Sonnets are full of love by Christina Rossetti. Sonnets are full of love, and this my tome has many sonnets, so here now shall be one sonnet more, a love sonnet from me, to her whose heart is my heart's quiet home, to my first love, my mother, on whose knee I learnt love-law that is not troublesome. 
whose service is my special dignity, and she my lodestar while I go and come. And so, because you love me, and because I love you, mother, I have woven a wreath of rhymes wherewith to crown your honoured name. In you not fourscore years can dim the flame of love whose blessed glow transcends the laws of time and change and mortal life and death. Mother's Treasures by Frances Ellen Watkins Two little children sit side by side. I call them Lily and Daffodil. I gaze on them with a mother's pride. One is Edna, the other is Will. Both have eyes of starry light and laughing lips or teeth of pearl. I would not change for a diadem, my noble boy and darling girl. Tonight my heart overflows with joy. I hold them as a sacred trust. I fain would hide them in my heart, safe from tarnish of moth and rust. What should I ask for my dear boy, the richest gifts of wealth or fame? What for my girl, a loving heart and a fair and spotless name? What for my boy, that he should stand a pillar of strength to the state? What for my girl, that she should be the friend of the poor and desolate? I do not ask they shall never tread, with weary feet, the paths of pain. I ask that in the darkest hour they may faithful and true remain. I only ask their lives may be, pure as gems in the gates of pearl, lives to brighten and bless the world. This I ask for my boy and girl. I ask to clasp their hands again, mid the holy hosts of heaven, enraptured say, I am here, O God, and the children thou hast given. Mother of Mine by Rudyard Kipling If I were hanged on the highest hill, Mother of Mine, O Mother of Mine, I know whose love would follow me still, Mother of Mine, O Mother of Mine. If I were drowned in the deepest sea, Mother of mine, O oh mother of mine, I know whose tears would come down to me. Mother of mine, O oh mother of mine. If I were damned of body and soul, I know whose prayers would make me whole. Mother of mine, O oh mother of mine. This is the dedication to Kipling's novel, The Light That Failed. Mammy. Everything is lovely when you start to roam, the birds are singing the day that you stray, but later when you are so lovely when you're all alone, here's what you'll keep saying when you're far from home. Mammy, mammy, the sun shines east, the sun shines west, I know where the sun shines best. Mammy, my little mammy, my heartstrings are tangled around Alabama. I'm coming, sorry that I made you wait, I'm coming, hope and trust that I'm not too late. Oh, oh, Mammy, my little Mammy, I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles, my Mammy. Mama's Mama Mama's Mama, on a cold winter day, milked the cows and fed them hay, slopped the hogs, saddled the mule, and got her seven children off to school, did a washing, scrubbed the floors, washed the windows and did the chores. Cooked a dish of home-dried fruit, pressed her husband's Sunday suit, swept the parlour and made the bed, baked a dozen loaves of bread, split some firewood, lugged it in, enough to fill the kitchen bin. Cleaned the lamps and put in oil, stewed some apples she thought might spoil, churned the butter, baked a cake, looked out and said, for mercy's sake, the calves are out their pen, went out and put them in again gathered the eggs and locked the stable, returned to the house and set the table, cooked a supper that was delicious, afterward washed all the dishes, fed the cat, sprinkled the clothes, mended a basket full of hose, then opened the organ and began to play, when you come to the end of the perfect day. Thank you for listening on Second Chance Ministry.